Now recently I've had a go at uh, looking into and setting up and experimenting with an antenna. It's an old design. The antenna is known as a W3EDP, uh, but with a twist in the case that I used. Now uh, what I'll do, I'll talk to you about the antenna, so the principles behind it, very quickly, and then I'll show you how well, hopefully, uh, the antenna actually worked. So the antenna itself was designed by a gentleman called uh, H.G. Spiegel, uh, W3EDP. His antenna design was published in the March 1936 edition of QST magazine by W3AWH, Yardley Bears. Now the antenna was designed to cover 160 through 10 metres. And um, as we can see here in the design, it's an 84 foot radiator, uh, which is also has a counterpoise of around 17 feet, uh, which is meant to be uh, fine for 160, 80, 40 and 10. And the, uh, what they also found was that uh, a length of about six and a half metres was pretty good for the uh, 20 metre band. Now, uh, since then, the antenna has sort of morphed in terms of its uh, design and sort of uh, gone through one or two sort of changes that have become sort of the, um, the current sort of vogue in terms of how the antenna is put together. So, uh, as we can see here, uh, the modern day version of the W3EDP is basically a 67-foot uh, um, radiator. But instead of uh, having a, 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 a counterpoise there, we've basically got the antenna, 67-foot, fed with ladder line. Now, that ladder line that is, comes to a length of about 17 feet. And you can see there at, at, on the source at the bottom, we tend to have a 4-to-1 unknown uh, connected uh, to the actual ladder line itself. Now, one of those legs, the, the hot side, if you like, is connected to the uh, the unknown on the hot side and goes up and is joined to the 67 foot wire. So um, in effect, you can argue that we've got an 84 foot radiator there. And if we go back to the design again, we can see that on the four to one unknown, uh, we have uh, the other 17 foot of the ladder line, which is connected to the ground. So effectively, we've still got our 67 feet of um, radiating wire. And uh, well, what lots of people determine it to be 17 foot of counterpoise. So what does this design actually uh, mean then? I mean, some people, for example, think it might be an off-center fed G5RV. Now, bearing in mind the G5RV, I believe, actually came along after this antenna. Uh, but isn't it funny how the, uh, the 84 and the 17 feet together comes to just about the length of a typical G5RV? I'm sure that's a complete coincidence, of course. Um, but uh, there we are. That's something that uh, a lot of people have, have, have uh, a conclusion anyway, that lots of people have actually come to. Now, alternatively, uh, does the ladder line portion of this design act as some sort of impedance transformer like it did for the uh, the old ZEP antenna? So going back to the design again, we could argue that that 17 foot of ladder line, does it act as an, as an impedance transformer for half wavelengths and multiples? So that 67 foot of wire, for example, is a half wavelength on 40 meters, full on 20, one and a half waves on 15 and a two wave on 10. So could that 17 foot uh, length of ladder line act as some sort of impedance transformer together with the 4 to 1 unknown to bring it to some sort of tunable SWR on those bands? Who knows? That could possibly be behind the design as well. That 84 feet of antenna is obviously quite long. And if you wanted to go portable, then obviously you could use it uh, as an inverted L or a sloper or whatever, but um, it's quite a, a long antenna to take portable with you. Now, this is where some people have looked into possibly sort of halving the size of the antenna. So we've now got a 42 foot version, which in terms of meters is something like about 12 and a half meters or something, isn't it? So thanks to the work of someone uh, called uh, Jose, and uh, I've got the design here in front of me, actually, as you can see there, Jose VA3PCJ. He designed the W3EDP Junior, which is in effect a half size. Now, um, according to him, and actually according to the original, of course, the original uh, apparently could cover 160 through 10 meters. According to Jose, we could press this antenna into service between 80 and 10 meters. I actually think 80 meters is a bit of a compromise um, for a 42 foot antenna. Uh, more likely this antenna would shine and do pretty well from 40 through 10 meters. So going back to the design then, and uh, what uh, Jose argues and what he's done, he's actually used this, is that you could put this up maybe uh, up a tree or maybe a 15 meter pole if you have one. So uh, what the design is like is you have the four to one and at the bottom, again, a bit like the other one. This time, though, instead of having 17 feet of ladder line, you've got eight and a half feet. So you've halved it, basically. 
and ditto with the wire. So instead of having 67 feet, you'd have 33 and a half feet. So when you join that 33 and a half feet to the eight and a half feet of wire, ladder line, I should say, going into the hot side of the four to one, you've got a 42 foot radiator. And then you've got an eight and a half foot counterpoise on the ground side of the four to one, the other, the other part of the ladder line. You notice as well, of course, in the modern day version, uh, most people would need to use an ATU with this and uh, usually an external ATU, to be honest with you. And the 4 to 1 anon is there, of course, to provide an, an impedance match to try and bring the, uh, the overall impedance down to a workable level for most ATUs. So that's the story there with this antenna. Now, Jose had quite a lot of success with it. And he argues it can be used as a sloper or as a vertical, even as an inverted V if you wanted to. Um, but certainly it uh, does a job in terms of maybe a, a, a strict up and down portable antenna. Now you'll notice in that particular design there aren't any extra counterpoise wires or radials. I suppose you could you could add them, that may well change the tuning a little bit, but strictly speaking this design of the W3 EDP um, doesn't really have those extra counterpoise wires at all, which okay, um, could make it a, a convenient, sort of slap it up and take it down again, sort of portable antenna for you to use on multiple bands. However, Jose went one step further and he halved it again uh, to a half size or quarter size now, and he called it the W3 EDP mini antenna. Now, as you can see, uh, effectively now, we've only got four and a quarter feet of ladder line, instead of the eight and a half, and we've got 16 and three quarter feet of wire attached to the hot side of the ladder line, instead of the 30, uh, 33 and a half, I think it was. So altogether, the overall length of this antenna is about 6.4 meters long, which is about uh, 21 feet. And going back to the diagram again, we can see that we've got now four and a half feet, which is about 1.3 meters of ladder line going to the ground side of the four to one. And again, like the other designs, we've got coax to the ATU and then ATU to the radio. That's the design that caught my eye, because if you're going truly portable and say, for example, you're doing a bit of SOTA or something, um, you know, even if you're just lazy like me, you'll take a seven, really lightweight seven meter fiberglass pole and this will fit in quite nicely onto that as a vertical. So you can see from the antenna itself I put up, it really was a, a lash up effort. Um, first of all, here's the four to one unun towards the base of the antenna. And you can just about see there, I think the ladder line attached to, to both, uh, one to the hot side in red and the, the ground side, of course, in, in black there. And uh, there's a, an example of how I didn't even, didn't even have time to solder. I just <laughs> used a wing nut to attach the uh, the ladder line, the hot side of the ladder line to the radiating uh, radiating wire, but uh, that attached okay. And uh, yeah, there's the the picture of the uh, the antenna itself. There, ignore the 40 meter dipole in the background. And yes, it probably was some interaction. But what do you do? You're in a small garden. You just got to play with these things, haven't you? So there we are, that was the antenna itself. And uh, let's see how she did. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Uh, Germany 5, Tango Mike, 259 Mike Delta. Thank you, 59100. Thank you, Whiskey X-ray 3, Bravo. Golf 5, Tango Mexico. Golf 5, Tango Mike, 59 Mike Echo. 59100, thank you. 59100. Pressure 100, thank you. Kilo 1, Lima, Zulu. Thank you, no Whiskey 3, Lima, Papa Lima. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Roger, 59100. Thank you, W3 Lima, Papa Lima. Germany 5, Tango Mike. The radio X-ray. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike, 59 New Hampshire. Thank you, 59100. Thank you, Kilo 1, radio X-ray. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike, 59 Pop Alpha. Thank you, 59100. Roger, 100, K3 Lima Radio. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Uh, golf 1, 5, Tango Mike. Uh, golf 5, Tango Mike. Uh, very, good, uh, very, good afternoon. Uh, very good afternoon to you. Nice to meet you. And uh, you are nice and strong team now here. So overall thoughts? Um, well, you know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a Yagi. Uh, it is what it is. It's a vertical antenna, which is uh, very simply made. I suspect it needs still needs a good radial system, of course, most verticals do, especially when they're less than a half wave long. Um, having said that, uh, as you can tell from the video there, a little snippet there, did quite well on 10 meters. Now, bearing in mind a lot of those stations in America were um, 
were very high powered contest stations. They did probably 95%, probably 99% of the heavy lifting. Having said that, at 21 feet long, 6.2, 6.3 meters, it's a 5 8 on 10 meters. And I have a feeling it would have done pretty well anyway uh, at that sort of length. So that's interesting. And bearing in mind the 42 foot version, the, uh, what, the mini, is it the mini? The junior version, that's right. Um, Jose, slightly longer version. Um, would be a 5 8 on 20. So if you can get that vertically, that could be a bit of fun as well. As I say, is it going to be the most efficient antenna? Of course it's not. Is it going to be an antenna that you can just schlep up somewhere and have a bit of fun? Of course. Pretty low impact, uh, low footprint. If you're on a campsite somewhere, for example, you know, or if you just want an antenna, you can just shove up and take down very quickly without need to scatter ground radials everywhere. Then, uh, you know, if you live in a HOA or something like that, then that could be an option. Or if you've got, you know, antenna unhappy um, neighbors or whatever you've got there in terms of being, stopping you putting up a permanent antenna this could be an option it's not going to be brilliant but it's going to be an antenna you can get along with and have some fun with i think the 21 foot version is great from 20 through 10 i think the 42 foot version is very good from 40 through 10 and i think the 80 uh yes the 84 foot version would be pretty good from, from 80 meters i think you could press in 160 80 and 40 respectively on those three antennas um, but I think that would be a big compromise, a, quite a big compromise, really, for, for those bands. But you'd probably still make some contacts. Anyway, there we go. Food for thought. Nice to try something out and experiment. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? And um, there we go. Anyway, 7-3. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, click subscribe. There's a little, something coming up on the screen there to do that somewhere. And there's another video popping up if you fancy watching some more. All the best. And, uh, well, good luck with your antenna experiments as well. All the best. Bye-bye.